there are a multitude of older games and indie titles that are friendly for low-end PCs and laptops with integrated GPUs. Browsing through Steam and other game platforms trying to find something fun to play that won't tax your system can be exhausting. Generally speaking, you'll want to be running at least a dual-core CPU and an integrated GPU from the last few years and about 4GB of RAM. This is David with TechSpot and this is the second part of our list of great but not very demanding PC games we can wholeheartedly recommend. Hearthstone Hearthstone is Blizzard's competitive card battling game. Its complexity and depth have thrust it into the professional esports arena, but that doesn't mean it cannot be enjoyed by the individual for a casual experience. The game is set in the Warcraft universe with 9 classes to play. Your choice determines what hero cards you can use during matches. Rounds are played using customizable decks of cards with the object of reducing your opponent's hit points to zero. Collecting and organizing decks is a metagame itself. Hearthstone has decent AI for playing solo against the computer, but it was really designed for two-player competition. After going solo for a while to get the hang of things, you find yourself drawn toward matches against players regardless of how much you may hate multiplayer games. Civilization 5 No list of strategy games would be complete without a Sid Meier's Civilization title. Unfortunately, Civilization 5 is tame enough that it won't kill your low-end hardware. You start the game with a single settler in the year 4000 BC. Turn by turn, you will build a city and expand it into an empire. By researching technologies, you will continue your quest for world domination against other nations over the course of 6050 years. Combat strategies are deep, with several types of military units to do your conquering. However, conquest is no cakewalk. A lot of thought goes into successful campaigns, so it is not for the impatient. Portal Portal is set in the Half-Life universe, although this is only apparent through references made during the game. You play as Chell, a female test subject at an abandoned facility called Aperture Science. The game is more of a first-person puzzler than a shooter. Your only weapon is a handheld device that can make entry and exit portals on flat surfaces. The only enemies you face are automated gun turrets and an evil rogue AI known as GLaDOS. Most of your time is spent trying to figure out how to get through test chambers using the portal gun. Portal 2 is much more of the same, albeit with a reluctant alliance between Shell and GLaDOS to outwit a new antagonist named Wheatley. The sequel also introduces a two-player cooperative campaign. StarCraft 2 StarCraft 2 is a slight departure from Blizzard's original sci-fi real-time strategy game. You still play as one of the three species, Protoss, Terran, and Zerg, but the campaigns are less linear, meaning you don't go from one set mission to the next. Instead, you can select from a variety of tasks to achieve your end goal. Regardless of these and other changes, StarCraft II remains the familiar formula of gameplay that made Blizzard's RTS sagas famous. Build your base, research technology, and build an unstoppable army. Orwell Series Orwell is set in a dystopian world heavily influenced by George Orwell's 1984, hence the name. The game simulates a computer with the player in control of it. You play as an operative for The Nation, a totalitarian government with a computer system set up to spy on everyone. You will snoop emails, monitor surveillance cameras, and other big brotherly duties. The narrative plays out as you uncover clues and facts related to a series of bombings. The graphics are simple and stylistic, Photos make heavy use of polygons to give it a surreal digital feel. The poses are not too hard, which is okay because the narrative is what drives this title. You can almost get a sense of doing something naughty as you pry into the lives of the suspects in the game, which fulfills any voyeuristic urges you may have without breaking the law. Minecraft Minecraft has sold over 200 million copies across multiple platforms and has around 130 million monthly active players. The sandbox building sim has generated online video content, real world merchandise, and spin off games. It's also acted as a palette for artists who have created stunningly beautiful environments. Minecraft has no goals, and there is no winning in the game, but perhaps even more than a game, Minecraft has turned into a platform with a huge community behind it and unlimited ways to play within their worlds. At its heart, Minecraft is like a massive LEGO building set, 
Creations are only limited by the player's imagination and the blocky graphics, which make it perfect for weaker hardware. Deadlight Deadlight is a side-scrolling survival horror title set in the Pacific Northwest. It depicts the action silhouetted against stunningly rendered backdrops. The year is 1984, 145 days after the breakout of a pandemic. You control a character named Randall Wayne, who is trying to catch up with his friends after being left behind in a warehouse. The atmospheric platformer has many environmental puzzles and hazards to figure your way through. The infected zombie-like creatures present a constant threat to your survival. You start with only your wits, but will soon come across weapons as you get further along. Ammo is very limited, so your main tactic will be avoiding threats or using environmental hazards to dispatch them. Limbo Limbo is a 2D platformer in the same vein as Deadlight. It even uses a similar silhouetted graphical style but done up in a moody grayscale. The game mechanics are similar too. You can climb, jump, push or pull objects all to figure your way to your goal. It's a dark game involving a young boy who wakes up in a forest on the edge of hell. He is searching for his missing sister while encountering hostile denizens including a giant spider. Most of the gameplay involves solving environmental puzzles and avoiding traps that usually kill you before you even know they're there, and you will die many, many gruesome deaths. For the squeamish, developer Playdead included a setting to filter the death scenes, which it does by flashing to black. Diablo 2 If you prefer your action RPG is more old school and top down, Diablo 2 is hard to beat. The game takes place in the randomly generated world of Sanctuary shortly after the events of the first Diablo. Using the unique abilities offered by each player class, you will unravel the mystery behind the corruption spreading throughout the land and discover the true motivations of the Dark Wanderer introduced at the beginning of the game. Your quest will ultimately have you facing the Dark Lord of Terror himself, Diablo. The graphics are dated, but with retro games making a comeback, that's not necessarily a bad thing and it's definitely a good thing for laptops and low-end hardware. RimWorld In RimWorld, you are trapped on a planet in the outer reaches of the galaxy. Your goal is to reach a spaceship to escape into space. To accomplish this, you have to manage a colony, research technology, and deal with game events, including natural disasters, pirate raids, and intercolonial conflicts. The game randomly generates events and colonists, including their stats, personality, and backstory, so no two playthroughs will ever be the same. The depth of this game is enormous, which makes it very challenging, but there are six difficulty levels giving players a more granular control of the challenge than most other games of this type, but it's still not a walk in the park. Magic the Gathering Arena Magic the Gathering Arena is a digital version of the card collecting game of the same name. It is somewhat similar to Hearthstone in its overall concept, but plays much differently. The main difference boils down to the defense. Attacks and magic are always targeted at the opponent's hero. That player can then choose to use a minion or other card to block that attack. The addition of an opponent's subplay makes for a more drawn out battle rather than the quick time limited matches of Hearthstone. However, it also makes for a significantly more tactical game. Hearthstone often feels like solitaire because there is no interruption of your plays during your turn. On the contrary, in magic, your opponent can actively try to defend and thwart your moves as you make them. So if you are into a card game with a bit more depth, Magic the Gathering Arena is the way to go. Invisible Ink If you like your turn-based strategy with stealth and cyberpunk elements in the mix, you might want to try Invisible Ink. The year is 2074 and mega corporations have taken over the world. Invisible Inc. is a spy agency that has 72 hours to get its powerful AI named Incognita installed in the enemy's computer system. To do this, the player must complete various missions to gear up with cybernetics and other equipment that will help them as they sneak about and hack computer systems before taking on the final enemy. Time management plays a significant role as everything you do eats away at your 72 hour time limit. The visuals are simple and practical, making it ideal for PCs with specs on the lower end. That about wraps up this second video on great games to play on laptops and low end hardware. Of course, this is YouTube, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when new videos drop. 
For more tech news, analysis, and gaming, head on over to techspot.com.